Peugeot's 108 demonstrates just how far city cars have come in recent years. In fact, this one's more sophisticated and efficient than you might ever have expected a model of this kind could be. This time round, Peugeot is offering a choice of efficient petrol engines in this segment and the option of a top variant featuring a neat retractable fabric roof. Plus, you can now personalise your car far more precisely to your preference. Creating a city car is hard enough. Trying to differentiate a design shared with other brands must be even more difficult. Such was Peugeot's job with this car, the 108. The French manufacturer has a long history in the market's smaller segment, stretching all the way back to the 104 model of 1972. Since 2005, though, it's shared its presence in this sector with sister company Citroen and their C1 and Toyota with their iGo. This trio of brands together created a single city car design tweaked in each case to their own individual preferences and established a Czech Republic factory to affordably build it for the next nine years. To be frank, that period was rather overlong, a realisation that Peugeot and its project partners would have arrived at in 2011, the first time they tried another joint venture city car design. This one, the more modern take on the genre, created by Volkswagen and its Seat and Skoda brands. Clearly, it was time for a rethink. For a car with more than one engine option, extra high-tech, a bit more space and more complete safety provision. This 108 is it, launched here in the summer of 2014. In all these areas, this model improves upon the standard set by its 107 predecessor, as of course do its very similar Citroen C1 and Toyota iGo design stablemates. Of the trio, this Peugeot has gone for a classier, more mature look than the C1 and comes with a 1.2 litre engine option you can't get in the iGo. And all three cars are more efficient and personalisable than even the finest city runabouts from other brands. So, is that enough to put this Peugeot in pole position in this segment? Let's find out. The latest city cars on the market seem to recognise that they won't always be used in the city. So, refinements been improved and pokier engine options added. In fact, the two issues are here linked. Peugeot's smallest hatch now offers a couple of petrol-powered three-cylinder choices, with an 82 brake horsepower VTI unit from the 208 Super Mini arriving to join an improved version of the older 69 brake horsepower one litre unit. Now that one litre engine is unashamedly aimed at urban folk and might become a little orally wearing if you were to use it over an extended motorway trip. If such a journey might be an occasional possibility, the 1.2 litre engine option, not incidentally available on this car's Toyota iGo design stablemate, would be a better choice. In fact, if you'll be doing almost any kind of regular open road motoring, then I'd say that the 1.2 litre variant will probably be a better bet, because overtaking is so much easier. The 1 litre model takes a yawning 29.8 seconds to accelerate from 50 to 70 mile an hour in its top fifth gear. In the 1.2, the same increment occupies just 15.9 seconds. Enough said. I'd suggest that this stat tells you a lot more than the usual 0 to 62 mile an hour reading, but for the sake of completeness, I'll give you that too. The 1 litre model takes either 14.3 or 14.6 seconds, depending on whether its engine has stop and start fitted. The 1.2 litre model manages the same benchmark in 11 seconds. Having said all that, there are a huge number of buyers in this segment who will only be using their cars on short shopping trips. People who'll probably have access to another vehicle for longer journeys. For these folk, the 1 litre VTI version of this 108 will probably be quite sufficient. As I mentioned earlier, this Toyota engineered 998cc unit has been improved. The specific changes including a higher compression ratio, an improved combustion chamber design and use of a low friction timing chain, 
all these things combining not only to improve efficiency but also to boost power slightly over the previous 107 model which only came with the earlier version of this engine. If you are familiar with that car then you should find this one to be a touch more drivable. For a start in the old 107 you really needed to wind some revs onto the clock in order to get anywhere which had a marked effect on your fuel consumption. In this car, nearly all of its 95 newton meters of pulling power is available right down low in the rev range from as little as 2000 RPM. That means you won't have to rev the thing to death in order to get it going, though if you do, the 998cc unit sounds playful. It's normally aspirated engine note filling the cabin with a characterful three-cylinder thrum. Now this also has the advantage of making the car feel peppier than it actually is. Once you've covered a few miles, the first thing you'll probably notice is just how light most of the controls are, especially the steering and the clutch. The exception to this is the gear change, which needs more of a firm shove than you'd expect from a car designed with urban driving in mind. If that's an issue, then you might well be tempted by the optional automatic Tronic gearbox that's potentially controllable via a set of steering wheel gear shift paddles that I doubt too many potential owners will bother with. I can also see many older folks scratching their heads wondering about the throttle blipping downshifts that you get with the Tronic transmission. The auto variant will certainly suit urban bound folk, people who will also appreciate the tight 4.8 metre turning circle and that light steering I mentioned. Parking is as easy as you'd expect in a car with an overall length of under 3.5 metres with good all round visibility, marred only by uh, the chunky rear C pillars. The wide rear wheel arches might also be a bit vulnerable here, but on top variants fitted with the multimedia system's standard reverse parking camera, that shouldn't be a problem. These big clear mirrors should help too. The brakes also feel up to spec, despite this Peugeot doing without rear discs and opting for a cheaper rear drum setup instead. And handling? Well, the development team behind this car say that they benchmarked the Ford KA in this respect, one of the results of which was that the steering was made 14% more direct than that of the old 107. Now, true enough, it does provide more fingertip feedback than before. Other incremental dynamic improvements include retuned springs and dampers, plus a lighter rear torsion beam, one of the things contributing to a 60 kilogram weight saving over this model's predecessor. The result is a slightly more agile, chuckable city runabout that can now be driven with a bit more vigour, but it still isn't the driver's choice in this segment, though that's something that few likely buyers will care much about. Pitch into a corner and you get the predictable helping of body roll and tyre squeal that you'd expect from this kind of car. Stick with it though, and this 108 can nevertheless be pretty good fun to pedal along. It might perhaps have been sharper in this respect had not Peugeot's engineers, rightly, been so mindful of the need to preserve a decent standard of ride quality. Because they had been, this car handles road humps and potholes very well. It's that bit better in this respect than before. In fact, as you probably gathered by now, almost everything about this 108 is that bit better than was the case with the old 107. No radical steps have been taken, the car just feels that bit more sophisticated and grown up. All city cars set their stall out for younger customers. The difference with this one though, and the trump card it holds over its Citroen and Toyota design stablemates, is in the way that its styling has also been calculated to appeal to the more mature folk, usually ignored in the stampede towards youth culture. As a consequence, you could imagine this 108 appealing to customers who might never have previously chosen a city car because they felt such a thing would be too insubstantial and cheap. 
These folk, I think, will see in this Peugeot a reassuringly grown-up proposition with discreet front-end treatment and assured, mature detailing. They'll also like the option the top version of this car offers of a full-length retractable fabric folding roof, creating that cabriolet feeling without the cost or buffeting associated with a fully-fledged convertible. It's a lovely touch, but even this standard fixed top version has plenty of those. There's certainly very little here that looks contrived or gauche. Chief designer Ivo Groen insisting on lots of chrome and a palette of restrained, smart colours. Take this nose section, for example, bearing as it does the so-called floating style front grille that's now applied to all the brand's most compact models. In this case, flanked by high-tech bifocal projector lamp headlights. Further brand family cues are found at the rear in these neat lamps with their illuminated line claw signature. They complete a more cleanly styled tailgate topped off by an integrated roof spoiler that hides the external hinges that used to look so ugly on the old 107 model. Now I say tailgate, in reality this lifting rear section is little more than a deeply sculpted hinged back window, doubtless there to reduce the cost of manufacturing, but from an ownership perspective a feature I've never liked. Unlike a proper conventional lifting rear hatch, this opening glass panel doesn't fully cut into the bumper, so there's quite a lofty lip over which you've to lift in your bags, even if the height of this has been reduced by 20 millimetres in comparison to this model's predecessor. The Volkswagen Up, along with its Skoda and Seat stablemate, suffers from the same thing for the same reason. Enough about access, what about actual luggage space, the lack of which puts so many people off the previous generation version of this car? Now the news that this 108 is 40 millimetres longer than that old 107 might lead you to hope for more in this area, but examine the small print and you'll find that all of this extra length has been added to the front end to meet modern safety impact legislation. In fact, this car's platform is pretty much the same as it was before, which will disappoint previous Peugeot city car buyers wanting to trade up to a model with the kind of generous 250 litre style boot space you get in a rival Volkswagen Up or Hyundai i10. There's nothing like that on offer here. Still, on the positive side, cargo room has usefully risen from the feeble 139 litre space you used to get in a 107 to a much more acceptable 196 litre capacity here, easily enough for a couple of small suitcases or a set of golf clubs. Curiously, that's nearly 30 litres more than a supposedly identical Toyota Igo. Not that luggage space is necessarily the be-all and the end-all for customers in this class. Most of them rarely use the rear bench in their cars and therefore have no issue in regularly pushing the 50-50 split rear seats forward to extend the space available. In this case, though the load area created has quite a step in it and the folded seats don't lie completely flat, you do get a very decent 868 litre capacity. If you need a greater capacity than that for your weekly shop, it might well be time to change your lifestyle rather than your car. If you are using the back seat, then you won't be expecting it to be very spacious, given that this car is just 3.4 metres in length. It isn't. Still with a bit of cooperation from those ahead of them, two adults could manage without too much grousing on short to medium length trips, even if they were six footers. I might even think of cramming my three kids on this bench, were it not for the fact that, rather annoyingly, there are still only two belts provided. Unfortunately, you can't get a third belt as an option. Fiat offers that with its rival Panda model. Why not here? If you do have kids, then I'd definitely go for the five-door model I have here. I've tried transporting my trio in the past with a three-door version of this kind of Peugeot, and it didn't take too long for the front seat backs to start looking very scuffed and scruffy as the children piled in and out. When it came to this car, my lot didn't mind the restricted legroom, but they did object to a couple of features you'll find on a lot of small city cars. The lack of proper wind-up rear windows, you only get this angled panel, and the slight claustrophobia engendered by the upwardly sweeping waistline of this rear door. 
Up front, it's reasonably easy to get comfortable, provided you've avoided an entry-level variant without seat height adjustment. Something that's important to have, because the steering wheel adjusts only up and down, not in and out. Settle in and start to look around, and if you've tried a few current city car models, you might conclude that the quality of the trim, though a step up from what was provided previously, isn't quite of the standard that you'd find in, say, a Volkswagen Up. Still, the design is more interesting, which takes your mind off the fact. And you can make it more interesting still for the instrument panel, the uh, dashboard frontage, the air vents, uh, the gear shift knob and the gear shift lever surround can all be easily changed to a colour of your choosing, even after years of ownership. The wide dashboard's nice, trimmed in this cool matte finish and framed by refreshingly slim A-pillars that aid visibility. And talking of visibility, if you specified your 108 with the optional fabric folding roof, then you'll need to accept the fact that with it open in bright sunlight, a number of the interior dials and displays will be difficult to read. It'll also be pretty difficult to converse with fellow passengers at higher cruising speeds too, despite the roof system's aeroacoustic deflector. Still, we all have to pay for our pleasures, don't we? Fortunately, the inside of a 108 is quite a pleasurable place to be, and quite practical too. There are a couple of cup holders in front of the uh, gear stick and one behind the handbrake, and a decently sized glove box incorporates a bottle holder, and there are stowage solutions for your mobile phone and loose change, as well as uh, door bins decently sized enough to hold a 500 milliliter bottle of water. Ahead of you at the wheel lie a mass of different shaped elements of trim. The round speedometer with its LCD central display is flanked by an optional vertically stacked rev counter that, as you accelerate, lights up like an 80s Atari video game. Even more curiously styled is the trapezoidally shaped central panel that holds the 7-inch infotainment colour display that Peugeot provides to dominate the centre of the dash on all but the entry-level model. This system really adds another dimension to the 108, and to be honest, I'd hesitate to buy one without it. It's operated using a fully integrated touchscreen, and can include a rear view camera on plusher models. Wherever it's fitted, you get a DAB radio along with vehicle and journey information, and Bluetooth phone connectivity that includes the sending and receiving of texts. What you don't get, rather astonishingly in this day and age, is even the option of adding satellite navigation to this setup, something Toyota offers on their iGo. Peugeot, in contrast, relies on the fact that owners will be able to connect their smartphones into this system and get route guidance that way. I'd suggest that to be a mistake. Not everyone is technically savvy enough to do that, especially not the more mature buyers that this French brand hopes would increasingly consider this car. Still, at least the whole process of smartphone linking is as simple as it can be here, thanks to a clever so-called mirror link function that duplicates the home screen of your handset onto the display for easier acclimatisation. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with absolutely all smartphone models, and when you do link in your handset, you'll have to get used to the fact that the screen goes blank when your phone reverts to its sleep mode. Still, get familiar with the whole process, and as you change into a world where you can do things like use Google Map Navigation, read your messages, or play web-streamed music, you'll wonder how you ever managed without it. Most current city cars have a stripped-out, price-leading, entry-level version provided in the range to make them look affordable but a variant that almost nobody buys because it lacks much showroom appeal. So it is here. In theory, 108 motoring starts at just over £8,000, but that only gets you a very basic entry-level model that can't be ordered with five doors and doesn't have any of the personalisation options and interior sophistication that really make this Peugeot what it is. Better then to think instead in terms of this car costing you from around £9,500 with a price span ranging to around £12,500. 
Now that's the kind of price bracket able to deliver the kind of 108 you'd be able to tailor to your own particular preferences. There's a £400 premium to go from a three-door body style to this five-door model and either way an optional £850 premium to pay if you want to have the top fabric folding roof fitted. Now this roof comes in three colours, black, grey or purple berry. The lineup does feature a few anomalies though. When it comes to engines, the range is split down the middle. The one litre VTI unit fitted to the base access and active variants that will take around 45% of sales and the 1.2 litre VTI power plant installed in plusher, allure and feline models. So you're stuck if you want the more frugal unit with plusher trim, which might very well be the case if you're urban bound and want the automatic two-tronic gearbox that's only available as a £250 option with that one litre engine. I can also see buyers looking at the plushest leather lined feline trim level wanting the option of the top fabric folding roof. That's not available either. Still, these caveats apart, you'd have to say that Peugeot has made the purchasing process behind this 108 as simple as it possibly could be. With the brand's well thought out, just add fuel, personal finance package, buyers over 25 can drive this model away, secure in the knowledge that for the next three years, they'll have no more to pay for servicing or insurance, and they'll be covered by roadside assistance and a comprehensive warranty. All they'll have to do in that period is to add fuel, and with a car capable of as much as nearly 75 miles to the gallon on a regular basis, it won't even be necessary to worry a whole lot about that. Before you commit to purchase though, you'll be wanting to know just how strong a value proposition this car's pricing represents in its class. After all, in this sector of the market, more than any other, buyers want to feel like they're getting a lot for their money by the standards of the segment. So, time to decide whether that's the case here. In terms of the competition, the first alternatives to this 108 you might want to consider will probably be the two models that share its basic design and roll from the same Czech factory, Citroen C1 and Toyota Zygo. The Citroen costs exactly the same as this Peugeot, but for a Toyota Igo, you'll need to find a model for model premium of around £300, and there isn't a 1.2 litre engine option. To be honest, ultimately, once dealer deals are taken into account, you'll probably find that there's not a lot in it between any of these three cars when it comes to price, so it really comes down to which design interpretation you prefer. Whatever your choice from the trio, if you're a savvy buyer, you'll be pitching it up against the city car segment's other key single multi-branded design, the one that really represents its toughest competition. This is the model that sector buyers know either as a Volkswagen Up, a Skoda Citigo, or a Seat Mi. Now at first glance, equivalent base one litre versions of these three cars look similarly priced to this Peugeot, but as ever, it pays to look at the small print. To match this 108's running costs, you have to get the Volkswagen, the Skoda and the Seat in their extra cost eco guises, respectively the Up Blue Motion technology, the Citigo Green Tech and the Mi Ecomotive. And that'll see you paying anywhere between £1,100 and £1,700 more than you would for this Peugeot. It's the same story if you go for another popular city car alternative, Hyundai's i10. The base version price matches itself quite closely to this Peugeot, but to get 108 star running costs, you actually have to pay another £1,300 more for the more efficient Blue Drive model. Ouch! In fact, to get a rival city car model that in standard form can get closer to the efficiency figures of this Peugeot, you've to cast your net further afield. Maybe towards Suzuki's Alto, the base version of which would save you around £1,000 over this car, but feels really cheap. A closer rival, I think, is Kia's Picanto, which in base one litre form gets within a few percentage points of this car's fuel and CO2 returns and looks good value at around £8,000. Are there other city car options? Well, not that many. Vauxhall's Viva and Renault's Twingo are both worth a look, but will probably work out to be more expensive. 
and list prices suggest that a three-door only Ford KA, a three-door only Fiat 500, and a five-door only Fiat Panda certainly will, despite the fact that the old tech 1.2 liter engines, the affordable versions have to have, could cost you up to 20% more to run. Also around 20% less efficient is Dacia's five-door only Sandero 0.9 liter TCE, though at least that's cheaper and more spacious in compensation. Before leaving talk of competitors though, I need to say a word or two about one of the key options that would really sell me on this design, the top fabric folding roof that around 20% of buyers will choose. No, a 108 equipped with this wouldn't feel quite the same as a proper convertible, but then you wouldn't get the running cost downsides associated with one of those either, or the buffeting at speed. Other manufacturers have been offering this kind of concertinaing fabric folding top for some time. Fiat on their 500 and Citroen on their DS3. But while those brands charge around £3,000 for this feature, the mere £850 you'll have to pay to get it on this 108 seems quite a bargain. The cheapest, most basic open-topped Fiat 500C is well over £13,000. The least expensive Peugeot 108 top model is nearly £3,000 less than that. Makes you think, doesn't it? So let's say that you've done your homework, you've looked at all the different 108 fixed and fabric top model options and decided that this Peugeot is indeed what you want. What can you expect for your money? Well, it's a bit disappointing to find that the entry-level version does without a 50-50 split folding rear seat and a rev counter, nor can it be ordered with any of the option or customization packs that are restricted to plusher variants like this one. Still, in base access spec, you do get high-tech projector headlamps with LED tracer lights, LED daytime running lights, uh, an integrated rear spoiler, electric front windows, a 12 volt power socket, remote central locking, aux in and USB connectivity, and an RDS stereo with steering column mounted controls. But hey, hardly any of the 108 sold here will be base spec cars. Your dealer will be wanting you to start your search on the second rung of the trim ladder, active the point at which you can really start to specify your car the way you want it, with the personalization options and the chance to pay extra for key features like five doors, the top fabric folding roof, the two-tronic auto transmission I mentioned earlier, and perhaps most importantly, the multimedia system with its integrated DAB radio and Bluetooth phone connectivity. At active level, there's also air conditioning, driver's seat height adjustment, a multifunction steering wheel, and larger 15-inch wheels. As usual though, the real niceties, things like alloy wheels, auto headlamps, front fog lights, a reverse parking camera, and climate control, are fitted to top spec variants like this one. Key items rare to find in this class, either fitted at the top of the range or available as options, include full leather upholstery and open and go keyless entry with push button start. Most buyers though will probably go shopping for a mid-range variant, then start the personalization process. A two-tone paint finish perhaps with the colors split along the bodywork waistline. Or maybe you'd like to make a change inside, where there's a choice of shades for the central instrument surround. Or you can simply have it finished in bright white, whatever exterior colour you choose. Now, to try and make the individualization program easier for buyers, Peugeot has come up with a range of seven so-called theme kits for this car, some of which you'll like and some you'll probably hate, but of course that's just the point. So, personally, for example, I rather like the dual-coloured paint finish you can get on the three-door hatch, but I hate the barcode pack that extroverts can fit to any 108, decorating its cabin with ghastly different coloured stripes. Your taste may be different, and possibly better served, by the other so-called dressy, kilt, diamond, tattoo or sport packs. Each kit can be ordered as a factory fit option and includes exterior and interior decals, 
uh, door mirror covers, carpet mats and a key fob cover. Or you can mix and match the bits that you like from different packs and get your local dealer to add them as workshop fit accessories. Paying extra for a bit of 108 tinsel is fair enough, but having to fork out more to get a decent safety spec is less acceptable. The old 107 predecessor to this car did without safety basics like ESP stability control, side airbags and Isofix child seat fastenings, which was really unacceptable. Fortunately, this time round, Peugeot has put things right. All models get the same complete safety equipment tally, running to twin front, side and curtain airbags, stability control, ABS and Isofix. There's even a tyre pressure warning system, a hill start assist control to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and further up the range, a speed limiter on manual models to help safeguard your licence in urban areas. Even if it is being targeted at well-heeled downsizers or those families looking for an easy to use second or third car, the 108 can't afford to be off the pace in terms of economy or emissions, nor is it. Peugeot proudly boasts that every model in the range comes in at less than 100 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide emissions, so there'll be no annual road tax to pay. That even applies to the Pokia 1.2 litre VTI PureTech variant with its lustier 82 brake horsepower power plant. This manages 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you really want to maximise your motoring returns though, you'll need to look at the feebler 1 litre VTI version, also three cylinders in size, a throbbing characterful unit that's fundamentally the same as that used in the old 107 model, but has been re-engineered for this, its replacement, with a higher compression ratio, a lower friction timing chain and a cylinder head with built-in exhaust manifold to help save weight. As a result of all this, uh, you get a combined cycle fuel economy figure that's been improved by just over 3 miles to the gallon to 68.9 mpg. Couple that frugality with a 35 litre fuel tank and you have a vehicle with a range of over 530 miles, which given typically small city car annual mileages will probably mean that you won't get on first name terms with the staff at your local filling station. CO2 emissions, meanwhile, are 4 grams per kilometre better, now rated at 95 grams per kilometre. Though, of course, this car's Toyota iGo and Citroen C1 design stablemates can match these figures, no other rival city car can, unless it's purchased in an extra-cost, eco-minded guise. So, for example, if you buy a standard 1-litre Volkswagen Up, say at me, Skoda Citigo or Hyundai i10, your running costs will be 10 to 15% higher, unless you're prepared to find anything between £800 and £1,500 more at point of purchase for an eco-branded version, respectively the Up Blue Motion Technology, the Mi Ecomotive, the Citigo Green Tech and the i10 Blue Drive. It always pays to read the small print, doesn't it? Still, at least uh, these rivals can be frugal. The least powerful petrol engine you'll find matched up against a 1 litre 108 in a Ford Ka, a Fiat Panda or a Fiat 500 will take you 10 to 15 fewer miles on every gallon and will chug out 20 to 25 grams per kilometre more of CO2. I should also uh, point out that this 108 model's cost of ownership superiority increases if you order your 1 litre variant with the extra cost stop and start system fitted, in which form it's badged the EVTI. You'll probably be familiar with the concept of stop start by now, a setup that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights, and makes quite a difference to your running costs. Get yourself an EVTI 1 litre 108 and your combined cycle fuel economy will improve to 74.3 miles to the gallon and your CO2 emissions will make better reading at a green minded 88 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now that's the kind of figure you might expect only a diesel engine to provide but which you can achieve here with lower cost green pump fuel. 
Plus, if you're a company car driver, then you'll save yourself the usual 3% diesel tax surcharge too. If we'd been talking about this car's 107 predecessor, it's at this point that I'd have cautioned you against opting for the extra cost Tutronic automatic version with its much higher running costs. This time round though, there's not such a penalty for ignoring the manual model option. In fact, there's hardly any penalty at all. Combined cycle fuel consumption dropping only slightly to 67.3 miles to the gallon, and CO2 emissions now making it below the key 100 grams per kilometer of CO2 barrier to 97 grams per kilometer. Whichever version you choose, you can keep an eye on your fuel consumption progress via the useful graphs provided in the multimedia system. What else? Well, there's no diesel option, of course. I say of course because the figures show that 90% of city car buyers historically haven't wanted to pay the premium for fueling from the black pump, and there seems no prospect of that attitude changing very soon. And residual values? Well, they might not be quite as strong as those commanded by a Volkswagen UP, uh, but once you've had a chat with your friendly Peugeot dealer, then you'll probably end up paying a bit less for a 108 in the first place, which will sort that out anyway. Insurance groupings range from 6E to 11E. Now that's a little dearer than the newest crop of rivals, but not by enough to be significant. It also means that the 108 makes a great choice for newly qualified uh, motorists or younger drivers looking for their first car. Now here it'll probably help that the body panels are designed to pop straight off, which makes accident damage cheap and easy to fix. Talking of maintenance, it would be good if Peugeot, and Citroen for that matter, felt able to match the five-year, 100,000-mile cover that Toyota offers on the iGo. Here you merely get the usual three-year, 60,000-mile Peugeot package. Still, on the plus side, you'll find that most spares are inexpensive as you have the choice to source the majority of mechanical items from a Toyota or a Citroen outlet as well as from a Peugeot dealership. There's also uh, three years of warranty against rust and 12 years of anti-corrosion protection. There's one man who, more than any other, knows Peugeot city cars inside and out. Having previously been chief designer of the old 107, Ivo Grohn also took on the role of design director for this 108. Asked if the differences between the two models made them like chalk and cheese, he demurs. No, in fact, they're like cheese and cheese because they share the same roots. But while the 107 is the kind of cheese you would have with a baguette, the 108 is a cheese you would want to eat with a nice glass of red wine. You know, there's something in that. This car does indeed feel a touch more sophisticated, not only than its predecessor, but also in comparison to its two design stablemates. Their priorities are fairly clear cut. You buy a Citroen C1 for value and a Toyota iGo if you're more interested in a fashion statement. Yes, 108 motoring is, of course, also about both of these things, but you sense in this car a broader range of more upmarket virtues that sit more comfortably within its diminutive frame. So, for example, I think I might feel a bit silly about specifying something like leather trim in a C1 or an iGo, but if I could afford to do so, I wouldn't think twice about the prospect in this Peugeot. Perhaps that's why, of the trio, this 108 is the model you'd feel happiest parking outside a five-star hotel. The plusher, more mature look and feel make it a better bet for downsizers. Of course, you may not care about that, and if so, this car might have a harder job to win you over, particularly since, like its Toyota and Citroen counterparts, it still isn't as spacious as some other competitors in this segment. Its other attributes are compelling though. Class leading safety and efficiency and enough clever infotainment to ensure that the fashionistas can Facebook their friends on their way to eat designer sushi. It's a car of our times, a city statement of intent and a key component in the strongest small car lineup Peugeot has ever had. <laughs>